My name is Vera Meinier. And I am Gloria Velasco. We are master students in the program of Religion and Cultural Heritage of the University of Groningen. In the course of, reli- of regional heritage, we are exploring the idea of meaning making as a process that takes place when there is a crisis, as a sort of strategy to cope with it and maintain well-being, and how this might be applied to heritage in the context of the Netherlands. As part of this research, we decided to go to the province of Groningen, and there we talked to Monique Antonius and Richard Veenstra to get a better understanding of their perception about what heritage is and how it is related to meaning making. Let's begin with a proper introduction. Uh, My name is Monique Antonis and I work for the province of Groningen as a uh, policymaker. And I coordinate a program called in Dutch Erfgoed, Ruimtelijke Kwaliteit and Landschap, Heritage, Spatial Quality and Landscape. My name is uh, Richard Veenstra. I'm also working for the province of Groningen as a policymaker, um, Cultural Heritage. Richard and Monique work in the ERL program in the province. Let's hear what this is about. Okay. ERL, it's, um, these are three Dutch words. Uh, Erfgoed, ruimtelijke kwaliteit en landschap. Uh, in English, heritage, spatial quality and landscape. Um, these are three subjects that we try to bring together in this program. Um, because the, the cultural heritage, buildings, monuments, archaeology as well, and landscape are very important for the quality of your environment, the, the, the space that you live in. Um, and on the, other, on the other hand, when you uh, add new um, buildings or um, there are new additions to the landscape like solar fields and windmill parks, um, you have to really add quality to those new uh, additions because uh, when you do that in a proper way that fits in the landscape or in the built environment, um, well, then you're talking about the heritage of the future and the landscape of the future. So these three are uh, very important to combine these three. And um, we in Groningen have uh, earthquakes and also a declining population, uh, which makes that um, uh, within our province we have to find answers to questions related to these three subjects um, faster than in, in other parts of the country. ERL is a broad program, but for this interview we wanted to focus on the role of the province in supporting meaning-making processes in cases of reuse of heritage buildings and in the case of the damaged buildings by earthquakes. To start, we asked Monique and Richard how they consider the emotions and feelings of the inhabitants of Groningen towards heritage in their work. According to them, there are two ways to achieve this. For instance, when it comes to religious heritage, they could cooperate with the Stichting Oude Groninger Kerk. Well, there are a lot of uh, uh, churches in, in Groningen, um, uh, over, the, uh, over the 200, uh, 240 churches. Um, a lot of those churches um, are uh, cared uh, by uh, the Stichting Oude Groningen Kerken. Uh, that's an um, organization who preserve uh, the buildings and uh, but also has contact with the, 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 the local people around those churches and um, they gave give us uh, information about the feelings about the wishes that those people have and um, so so the, the, those organizations are very important for us they can also approach heritage owners directly there is also a uh, organization uh, of uh, heritage owners, um, not only for religious heritage, but for heritage in general. And uh, people on the board of, of that organization are also important for us to talk to, because there are so many individual owners of heritage in Groningen. So it's very good for us to have a sort of spokesperson mm-hmm. uh, who is an owner of heritage it's himself or or well it's a group of people mm-hmm. uh, but they represent the owners of heritage in Groningen and um, so most of the time we talk to these people but of course um, people contact us as well yeah. individual owners or people that are worried about heritage and we of course we we uh, listen to them and try to help them Mm -hmm. or they write us letters or um, for instance we're making a heritage monitor and we we uh, send letters to all these people all the owners of those thousands of buildings 
and not all of them, <laughs> but a, a, gr a small group of them um, gets in touch with us because they have questions or, or are worried or, or are happy with what we're doing. So that's when we have a direct contact with, uh, yeah. with these people. However, the decisions and the conflicts in the process of decision making about the use of heritage, it is not the responsibility of the province. That part corresponds to the municipalities and the province is there to provide guidance. And we talk a lot uh, with the local government uh, about heritage and uh, to, to, to find uh, consensus how to deal with the heritage. Mm -hmm. And um, there are also um, laws um, um, who um, give, us, give us directions uh, how to um, how to conserve, uh, and, and, and etc. Yeah, it's, it's so we are here to make uh, long-term policy, which can conflict with the short-term um, interest uh, of the owner. Uh, most of the time, um, the owner is just as proud and uh, <laughs> um, uh, and wants to uh, preserve uh, the monu the monument. Um, or the building, or the or the or the house, <laughs> or or a um, farm, um, but sometimes, uh, especially when it co uh, when uh, with farms, for instance, um, it's hard to preserve a a barn that they can't use anymore uh, because of the the height of the building or whatever, mm -hmm. um, because it's still a business, and. Um, in those cases, the local government has to, uh, when they want to tear a barn down, for it's just an example, eh, when, they, when they want to tear it down, uh, because of economic reasons, um, the local government has to uh, look at the situation uh, to see if the cultural value uh, adds up to the economic value of the building mm -hmm. or the, the value of, of the use of the building. So. It's not always that we say you can't uh, tear it down or you can't do anything with it, because that's impossible. You always have to look at every individual situation. Yeah. And uh, that's the role, in this case, uh, of the local government. So we try to help them as, as best as we can, mm -hmm. but it's the local government that has to um, look at this each individual case. Um, uh, when you want to, uh, when an owner wants to re give reuse to a building, that's a different subject. Mm -hmm. And I also think that the owner is very important in the decision making yeah. because it, it's the owner. Yeah. <laughs> um, if someone, um, it's, it's also the economic risk is for the owner. Uh, when a, when a reuse doesn't work, or it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, it's the owner that uh, has to. Uh, so is that is for the yeah. yeah. They also established a difference uh, in what heritage in the Netherlands is. Explains as something that because what we call heritage, you have s different categories. You have national monuments, mm -hmm. and the funding that we mentioned earlier is for these national monuments. There are also municipal, uh, local monuments. Um, not all municipalities, but some of them have special funding for their own local monuments, and there is this group with characteristic buildings, mm -hmm. uh, which is not officially a monument, but are mm -hmm. buildings that are important for the identity of the area. Yeah. So you have to keep that in mind. Most churches, mm -hmm. most of them are <laughs> national monument when they are, when we call them heritage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, even if the province is not directly involved in meaning making processes, it provides a contribution to these processes by facilitating certain activities to create consciousness about the importance of heritage. What we do uh, yeah. uh, is uh, um, try to share knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, for instance, with the uh, conference from your uh, faculty, mm -hmm. um, we took all the interesting persons in the bus and we, we drove them to up and down, and uh, or we organize conferences ourselves, or we try to uh, share the knowledge about these things. That's that's uh, thing. That's the thing we do.
So now we, we would like to talk about the earthquake, earthquakes in Groningen, because um, we feel like this is really a crisis for, for the inhabitants and um, it affects people's lives and, and their lived environment. Um, and we read ab uh, about a scholar, Crystal Park, and she says that in times of crisis, people tend to um, seek meaning in their lives to, as a like sort of a coping mechanism mm -hmm. um, and to ensure their well-being. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see this whole earthquake? Um, yeah. Do you see it as a crisis or how do you perceive this? Yeah, we see it as a crisis, as a big crisis. It, it, it's a big crisis. And, um, uh, but we, we also see that uh, people um, uh, think that their, their, the identity of Groningen is, is very important. And people uh, are afraid that the earthquakes and the strengthening of buildings and the demolishing of buildings um, and the damaging uh, of buildings uh, uh, would um, yeah, uh, how do you say that in English? Um, that uh, it as a bedreiging is a, a threatening for uh, the identity of Groningen. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, it's a big crisis. But it's it's almost like a crisis in slow motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because there's not one big earthquake, there are several small ones, that some of them we don't even feel, but it damages the houses. And how would you say that this er earthquake crisis might have changed the perception of the people in Groningen uh, towards their heritage? Uh, they care more about their heritage, I think, than in the other regions of... Uh, 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 because... Um, because uh, because there's a threatening and uh, that and, and what Monique said that people are um, um, are more emotional about the the, the situation um, so they, there's also a drive to uh, to make it clear that they don't want to lose the heritage uh, yeah that's made, that made made it um, yeah but we see that there's uh, that heritage is, is became more important uh, uh, for people, uh, more important for the government also. Um, to conclude this interview, we decided to ask them if they believe meaning making is important and should be considered in their policies and work. Do you feel that uh, heritage organizations or even government organizations should include meaning making in their policies? Yes, I think that is important. We see that the Stichting Algorithm Kerken, for instance, um, 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 joins in with in, 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 in a national uh, project that's called the biggest museum of, of the Netherlands. Um, and uh, four churches of the, the Stichting are uh, always open, so you can go in and that's that, that's for um, uh, yeah, meaning making tourism um, so it's a, it's a new kind of tourism that people want to go to a church to be um, no, yeah, uh, to, um, to relax or to um, to, to pray or uh, and and uh, so we see that that that's more important we also see that um, buildings like churches, but also um, uh, cafes, are important uh, in in the crisis, uh, in the earthquake crisis. But if, um, for instance, in Westerwijdwerd, uh, there was uh, the last big uh, earthquake. And um, then the, the, the local cafe is the place where people meet, um, and uh, yeah, in, in, in churches and, and cafes or that sort, that kind of buildings are mm -hmm. um, are very important. Then. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the only thing that we can do as a, a provincial uh, government is try to put the owner uh, and the inhabitants of of Groningen uh, in a central place uh, to. Um, well, like with the, the, these funding that we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. 
that every time, because it's it's an experiment, we ask uh, um, these owners what they need. If if the 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 um, the way to uh, to get funding, for instance, is still something that they can do, if it's not too difficult, or is, are these still the, the the right goals that the, or uh, that they can use the funding for, or that um, I think it's important to 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 keep that in mind that mm -hmm. that you do it for the for the inhabitants and for the owner, yeah. and that's also a way of um, meaning making. Yep. Um, uh, well, just to to keep that in mind when we make policy instruments. Yeah. Yeah. And do yeah. you do you also maybe still have questions or not? That's also fine. <laughs> or what do you think about this meaning making idea? If you find it useful or or yeah. not? I think it's yeah. useful. Yes. Yeah, because it's it's helped it helped people in in, uh, in in the in the in the crisis we are in and um, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think. It's, um, it helps. Yeah, and I think um, what we didn't mention earlier is that what what we always say from ARL is that um, we uh, the, 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 your, your, the heritage and your landscape makes you feel at home. Mm -hmm. So it has to do with feelings that people have for the place they live in or that they visit a lot. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel at home? And that has everything to do with meaning making. I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, we would say that the three most important aspects that the province brings to meaning-making processes are First of all, they provide a network that enables the diffusion of knowledge on the heritage. They also organize lectures and trips, trips with different organizations. In other words, they share knowledge. Also, they give economic support by funding restoration projects. At last, they support the municipality and stakeholders that need help and advice by providing guidelines and advice. Finally, we consider that the province is an institution that unfolds the administrative infrastructure that can facilitate meaning-making processes to take place. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. We want to thank Monique and Richard for the effort and time, as this wouldn't be possible without their support. Uh, we are Gloria and Vera. And we hope you have a nice day. Bye! Bye. <laughs>